We had just seen incredible things with our nephews in Utah. The spectacular landscapes and rock formations around Moab captivated us all. Then we caught a glimpse of the amazing cliff dwellings at Mesa Verde National Park. And then we capped it all off with a visit to my sister's farm for a little family time. Now we were off to the next, and you won't believe all the things we saw. So we left Tierra Vida Farm and headed off to nearby Pagosa Springs. Now you may not know, but Pagosa Springs is actually where an important part of the Art We There Yet story took place. My family used to live here, and we were staying with them when we ran the Indiegogo campaign to fund the bus. This is where we filmed the Indiegogo video, where we ran the campaign, and where we shipped all the perks from. A local publication, the Pagosa Sun, even did a little article about the project during the campaign. How cool that our winding route now led us right back there. Now Pagosa Springs is a beautiful place. Located in southwest Colorado, it's bordered by the San Juan mountain range to the north and the east, and it features some of the best hot springs in the state. The San Juans are volcanic in origin and only stopped forming about 10 million years ago. The hot springs are fueled by heat still left over from this process deep within the earth. And where there are hot springs, well... We are about to go into hot springs. Yoo-hoo! Woo-hoo! And we're gonna get boiled like, like boiled egg, right? Like poached chicken. Mm -hmm. Yep. And look at the beautiful bus. Look at the beautiful bus here parked in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. The place where it all started. I just want to get water. All right, let's go. We're going to walk this way. Watch for the cars. Anthony, why don't you test this one out with your brother? Alright, it's not deep. It's not deep, right? I don't know. I like it a little too much? Careful. Is it, what is this, this one right here. It's nice, right? And it's like perfectly your size. Ah, my foot! It's a waterfall. Okay, I'm gonna come in. What do you think? It's on the rock. After soaking for a bit, we got some tubes and hit the San Juan River. Now the hot springs flowing into the San Juan River may be hot, but the river is not. It's fed from snowmelt high up in the mountains, so this is actually pretty darn cold water. How 
is it? Watch out for that rock. Dun, 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 dun. You're going to hit it. Hey. How was it? Good. Yeah? Did you guys flip? Almost. Almost? Oh. We're gonna go now, like a little uh, farther up the river, so we can get more time in the river. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. Hi. Where'd you go? Ah. Let's start. Woohoo! Let's start the rocks. We're stuck on a rock. There we go. Stuck on another rock. I think this is why they don't have a start up here. A little rock in here. I think. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you, Tia Luis. It's gonna get us unstuck all the way down. Oh, oh no! It's fun for cars. Thank you, Tia Luis. Chico, you might have to lift it up. Come over here where the car is. Oh no! Right, gonna go work. Jump in quick, Tia Luis, before you lose us. There we go. Yay! Bye, Chico! Bye, bye Chico! <laughs> I'm not sure about this going backwards thing. I don't like not being able to see where I'm going. What about you, Anthony? You guys want to go see in front? There we go. Oh, let's see. There, we can see now where we're going. Not better? Uh, no, we're not. Oh, no, now we're spinning. <laughs> Do you like Colorado? Yeah. <laughs> I can see everything now. Yeah. Do you know this water's coming from high up in the mountains? That's very we're about to go over the big, no, a little one. Oh, here we go. I got you. No, I got it, I got it, got it. Hold on tight. Hold on tight. It's a big one. Survive the rapids! I think we got a we got a couple of more to go. I really thought we flipped there for a second. I was like, oh yeah, that's me. Because you know what? You're my uh, you're my life list. If I don't hold on to you, I'm gonna just gonna sink to the bottom. Are you, you having fun, Anthony? Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Chico. Pushers. Chico's pushing us. Come on, Chico. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Ah! Ooh. Ooh, so cold. <laughs>
have made it to the end. Wow, look at that sulfur depositing. Hey, Chico. With an awesome day of river time behind us, we headed onwards and upward further into the beautiful state of Colorado. But first, we had to get up and over the famous Wolf Creek Pass. All right, so we are about to go over a big pass that we have here, bringing the bus over here. It's called the Wolf Creek Pass here in Colorado. But Bobby with a rebuild engine, I think it's gonna do great, so we'll see. We had been nervous about this pass for a long time, wondering if Bobby Bus could even do it. We were about to find out. Wolf Creek is considered one of the most dangerous passes in Colorado. While it only has a max of 7% grade on either side of the pass, it's just unrelenting and has dangerous hairpin curves that have proven deadly. Between 2015 and 2019, 47 semi-trucks have lost control and crashed on this pass. Three truck drivers have even lost their lives. Needless to say, the boys were with me in the Prius. And wouldn't you know it, our Bobby climbed that pass like it was nothing. Now granted, it's scariest doing the pass in the other direction, but still, she still did it like a boss. The great thing about Colorado is that it just keeps blowing you away with new surprises. We had been in Colorado only two days, and already we had seen Native American cliff dwellings, we had soaked in hot springs. We had tubed down a mountain river. Now Anthony and Fran were getting their first real taste of the Rocky Mountains. As we dropped down out of the San Juans, we entered the San Luis Basin. Not many people know this, but the San Juan mountain range is actually where the Rio Grande River begins. And this basin is part of what's known as the Rio Grande Rift Valley. Rift valleys form when a section of Earth's crust is pulled in opposite directions until the space in between drops down to form a basin bordered by mountain ranges on either side. Now the San Luis Basin has an extra unique and special treat hidden away in one of its corners. Great Sand Dunes National Park, another trick up Colorado's sleeve. These sand dunes were formed by just the perfect combination of factors. The San Luis Basin once held a lake, and the rivers that fed it brought large amounts of sand to the valley floor. After the lake drained, those sediments were pushed up against the mountain range on the basin's eastern side. A slight bend in the range served as the perfect natural trap for all of that sand. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, Finley, hold on. Anthony, what are you going to do? i jump. You're going to jump? Yeah. All right, go. I made my shoes and tacked. <laughs> now come back up. <laughs> come on, running. <laughs> Come on, you can oh, do it. What did I tell you? <laughs> I told you it's gonna be harder. <laughs> Show Chico how easy it is. <laughs> oh, it's so easy. You're walking. You're crawling now. <laughs> oh, look at you. This, this is the best place to to have Anthony burn his energy. Yeah, no kidding. Really like. You do know we're gonna climb all the way up there. All right, Anthony, you're off a leash. You can run whatever you want. Sand dunes are Mother Nature's best playground. We couldn't think of a better place to let Anthony just be Anthony. He could run as far and as fast as he wanted, and nothing could hurt him. If he fell, he had a soft landing. We didn't have to worry about cars or crosswalks or cliffs or steep mountainsides. We could just sit back and just let him do his thing. <laughs> the dunes here are the tallest in North America. The tallest, called Star Dune, rises up 755 feet. Go higher, no, no, here on the trail. Go higher, I'll wait for you, and then you run down. I'm gonna take you a couple of nice things. Jump, 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 jump! The dune field stretches over 30 square miles, but you have to be careful when you explore here. During the day, surface temperature on the sand can reach 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and at night, it can drop to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a place of extremes. While Chico and I headed back down to the bus, Anthony and Jose Luis pushed onward to climb the tallest dune in the park. From there they caught the sunset, and the pictures are just something else. The next day had another super special treat in store. But first we had to leave the San Luis Basin and climb over the Sangre de Cristo Range, another beautiful mountain drive. On our drive from the dunes to our next destination, we passed through valleys and small towns, and then another long mountain pass. This one was a little less intense than Wolf Creek Pass, but no less beautiful. Once we dropped down on the other side, we drove straight north, hugging the mountains that we had just crossed over. 
This area is called the Front Range. Here is where the Rocky Mountains rise up suddenly from the plains that stretch thousands of miles to the east. We drove north along the Front Range, and then we had one final little climb to get to our next destination. Have you ever tried to park in a super crazy, super busy tourist attraction parking lot? One that already has limited space? Now imagine trying to do that in a 35-foot rig. But it was worth it. Because the attraction that was drawing all these people here, including us, is one none of us wanted to miss. Holy cannolis! On a cupcake. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we are in a cave tour. We are under the earth. We're under the earth. Now this is the Valley of Dreams. This was the original endpoint of our cave tours. Back in the day, there used to be eight-hour tours. That was the case in 1935, when a man by the name of George Jeffries took our tour. He got down here, and he was understandably tired. He needed a moment to catch his breath, gather himself, so he sat down, right about there, and he leaned his back against what he thought was a solid wall, the passage we just came through. Now, he felt a breeze on the back of his neck. That breeze told him there was more cave he had not gotten to see. Let's see what is it really cool. I know. Cave of the Winds is one of those spots that you should really see if you have the chance. This limestone was formed over 500 million years ago when a shallow sea once covered this whole region. Fast forward millions of years, and this limestone was uplifted in the same mountain-building event that built the Rockies. When rainwater mixes with carbon dioxide, weak carbonic acid is formed. And when this sneaks into little cracks in the limestone, it slowly dissolves it away until eventually, massive caves are formed. Best guess, some kind of mudslide or possibly an earthquake. Whatever has broken them apart has caused them to become misaligned. Even if they continue to grow, they're not going to fuse together the way they were before. So I tragically named them Romeo and Juliet. I can see you guys. I can see you. It's a little bit of light. These are found between 1 and 3,000 years old, but they are still just babies for stalactites, and in fact, the youngest formations in our system. Can you tell me if the tail might hit some of the cars? I can't see. Hold on. You're clear. So, I can let you pass me and I'll follow you. Okay, I can direct you. Sounds good. Now, we had no idea the road to Cave of the Winds was this steep and windy. Bobby can go up just about anything. She just goes slow. So climbing this hill hadn't been too scary, but going down it was another story. Those hairpin turns on a two-lane road were pretty tight. And as you can see, the road has no shoulder. 
and then it was pretty much a straight drop down the mountainside. After Cave of the Winds, we went to Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs, where we had the shortest little visit with my parents, just long enough for a little hike together. Wow. <laughs> You do your hand like this and go sit. Sit. That's the signal. Sit. Sit. There you go. Go. Good girl. <laughs> okay, that's following you. She's like, I know where the treats are, man. <laughs> Even though the visit was so short, it was still so wonderful to see them. And then, just like that, we left the mountains behind us. Colorado was a whirlwind. At one point, Chico reflected, I can't believe we just did all of that in the same state. We were now entering the part of the USA called the Midwest. Now, some may think this part of the country is boring, but if you're from here like I am, you know it's anything but. We were now driving through the state of Kansas, where my mom's family is from. And I knew just what I wanted the boys to experience while driving through the Midwest. The classic American County Fair. The county fair is a classic American tradition, one near and dear to my heart as I grew up going to my county's annual fair. The fair has its roots in farming, a place to compete and exhibit the year's agricultural and livestock yields. The fair has also grown into a great excuse to have all sorts of fun. Rides and food, and one of my personal favorites, the demolition derby. It quickly became a favorite of Anthony's as well.
Demolition Derby. Get him out, Cora, Tia Cora. Get him out. <laughs> Push him out. There you go. There you go. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Hmm? What are we eating? What in the world is this? <laughs> the best thing ever. So good. Let me see if it's true. Hard crack on a plate. This is like this is like jet fuel for Anthony. <laughs> Not bad. Right? You guys are about to go on this ride. <laughs> Unfortunately, the ride had just closed. That was a bummer. But fortunately, the demolition derby was still going on. Number seven. It looks like lumber cars, right? Now we may have let Anthony overdose on funnel cake. By this point, we had seen what sugar can do in a seven-year-old's bloodstream, but this was next level. Yeah. Needless to say, that was the last funnel cake we bought on that road trip. This is a youth livestock auction in which young people show the animals they spent all year raising. They're being auctioned off to local businesses and community members. They were, um, they're over this way in this one. In this one. That's your bacon right there. Whoa. Yeah. You can walk, you can walk through. 
Just don't get too close. That's that. That's fine. That's that's far enough. With the fair behind us, a chapter of our nephew time came to a close. Up to this point, we had focused on big nature and small towns. Now we were headed for big city time. We were now pointed straight towards our mecca, the Emerald City at the end of our yellow brick road, Chicago. Next time on Aren't We There Yet? Look, there's a city in Chicago. City time. We had been talking about it and leading up to it for weeks. It was the grand finale to our time together, and we jam-packed it with adventure. We were finally here, Chicago. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Art You There Yet journey. Join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon. <laughs>